With heirloom sewing, we are creating things to last from one generation to another. These clothes speak very loudly and clearly. I love you and spent the time making something gorgeous for you to wear. For future generations, these words are still spoken through the stitches and the actual garment. Sharing the love of heirloom sewing with you is our joy today with the ladies' blouse, sew booking, doll dressing, vintage clothing, and hand embroidery. I would like to welcome you to my sewing room. to see something beautiful? Well, I have it for you. This elegant, elegant blouse, or can be worn as a jacket or a blouse, is made out of a beautiful pink handkerchief linen. Is this the most beautiful embroidery you've seen in a while? I think it is, so delicately colored. Now look, it has the piping, the silk charmeuse, teeny, teeny baby piping around the neckline, the uh, shoulder seams and the arms eye. Now look, we have two little buttonholes and then we skip down two little buttonholes and buttons. But before we go down to the bottom of this beautiful blouse or jacket, I want to show you a touch of elegant embroidery on the sleeves, just a teeny, teeny touch absolutely beautiful. Now let's come down and see this truly, truly beautiful technique that's been used on the bottom of the sleeve and around the bottom of the jacket. The laces have been buddied together. It's some beading and insertion. Do you, I want you to look, do you see the pink, the pink that's showing through where the laces have been joined? Well, that's a trick. These have been joined on the serger and then we have the decorative thread that is showing through just that little bit of pink. And I'm going to share with you how easy it can be if you have a serger to join your laces for your heirloom sewing. Basically what we've used is traditional uh, insertions and beadings. When we say beading, that means you run ribbons through the little holes. Insertion, beading, insertion. We have used a 30 weight silk thread. Now you remember I told you about that pink showing through? Okay, we have two pieces of lace, right sides to right sides, Surge the edge with that beautiful pink showing through. And then, you see how pretty this is? And this was all joined on the serger. The pink is showing through just so ever so delicately where the laces have been joined. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Shirley Schooley. Shirley is a FAF creative consultant. And Shirley, the blouse is beautiful. Thank and you. welcome to the show, all oh, in one thanks. same breath. <laughs> show us how you did that. I would love to. This is an exciting technique. I was inspired by Linda Lee Vivian to try this. And we've been joining laces in heirloom work for a long time. And we've gone from just regular joining to using the serger. And this is a new technique. It uses the flat lock stitch on your serger. And if you will look here, I've just done a simple little sample that shows you the regular flat lock stitch. We see that on sportswear and a lot of other things. And we're going to take advantage of this ladder part of the stitch that would be in some ways the wrong side of the stitch. I have some samples here for you and you'll notice the spool of thread. This 30 weight silk thread comes on 50 meter spools. It's sort of precious but it's wonderful uh, to use. But you can join the laces. I have this one sample piece where I've used a bolder thread than what I would normally recommend but you can see it more easily and see how much color is added to that. You can also use this technique joining entredeau to lace. You simply make certain that that needle falls into each hole of the entredeau. So let's see how we would do that and how I did this blouse. Uh, of course, lined up the laces and you can decide. And the main thing is that if you're doing beading, you don't want those holes <laughs> all uh, ajar. But otherwise you do that to suit your own fancy and lay those out so that you know what you're going to be uh, stitching. And then, of course, you're going to start and pick up two of those pieces of lace and you are going to uh, lay those right sides together and take them to your serger. Set up for a flat lock stitch with the stitch with leather lever down. Check your um, owner's manual, but you'll want a very, very, very narrow uh, stitch here. And I have mine set, it seemed to work best with the silk thread, at 1.75 stitch length. Again, you experiment a little bit. So if you will look here, 
I have also my machine, my serger, set up for a um, with a blind hem foot. Now that's not the regular foot that comes on your serger. You may find that it came with your serger. You may find that that's an accessory foot. It's useful for a lot of purposes. But if you will look here, it has a little guide that's going to keep that lace from slipping over to the blade. You're not going to be cutting anything off. And you can also keep all of those edges very, very even. And you will want to adjust that. It is adjustable so that you get that needle going down just in the right place. Also, if you uh, will think about your serger, you're going to need to have the decorative thread in the needle and a regular serger thread, uh, perhaps that goes with your lace um, in your um, loop, lower looper. And then you're simply going to stitch, keeping the lace right against that guide so that you're just covering the header of the lace. And when you get through, I have a sample piece already complete here for you. You can see here, you can see, in this case I'm using the blue instead of the pink. You can see that shining through, if you would. Beautiful, beautiful little technique uh, that we've not seen before. <laughs> Shirley, it's beautiful. Now, I've noticed one thing, though. Did you use one spool of blue thread and one spool of ecru thread? And how was that threaded up? Uh, this, the blue thread is in the needle. Okay. So whatever your directions are for, for threading the needle, and then just regular serger thread, which is the lower looper. Okay. This beautiful blouse, and Shirley, your technique is glorious. And I just think you're one of the greatest designers in the whole world. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And now Shirley has some beautiful sewing inspirations to share with you. Shirley, these are beautiful pillows. Now, Thank you. you. Tell me this is... This is all done on the serger, except for the final stitching of the French seam. And the embroidery, is, of course. And the embroidery, of course. And how long did you say it Maybe takes 45 minutes at best. Oh, my goodness. What a beautiful... And you have one in pink. I'll let you put that over there. Great baby gifts. Oh, talk about a great baby gift. Wonderful satin batiste oh, fabric. And love that. Christmas wonderful embroideries. And you know how I love baby bonnets. We have the one in the uh, pink... Well, this was my practice piece before I did the pink blouse. So I, I like to practice that. on something and know that the technique works. But, you know, this way it, it's something more than just a scrap. And this beautiful little blue bonnet. Oh, it's so and cute. And this is my welcome little to boy. the world, baby For boy. your new baby. For my For baby. your brand yeah. new grandson, Grand Matthew. That's right. And the little embroidery, the little blue ribbon baby embroidery. Now, I'm going to have to show our And viewers. his initials, of course. Oh, and this is what he came home from the hospital in. That's right. With the blue ribbon baby and his initials. Now, I have to show all of the ladies. He's a this adorable diaper oh, cover no, that darling. says precious little one. He is and six has days a lamb. old, Martha. He's six <laughs> days old. Well, it's just a big congratulations. It's wonderful. How adorable. Now, this was a ready to embroider. This I was a ready to embroider, and I set the a design up dress. in my, right, I set the design up in my software and stitched the whole thing, the whole front, with my big hoop, and then did the little roses on the scallops oh, separately. So Great sweet. way to do something wonderful and unique. And yes, fast. And, and fast. We like fast. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a wonderful story about this lace. Well, Shirley, I got this lace this panel. It was lace. sort of brittle and uh, brown, nasty but I restored film. it and nasty, and it, it was exactly like this. It has these wonderful crosses, and so I have. This is now a family christening gown for this new baby boy. Matthews. And I used English netting at the top to try to replicate a little bit the design. And then so sort you of made it up as I went this along. One. You made the new design to go on new English netting. Put this beautiful cotton netting antique piece. And you have a made with love for your I have a made brand with love. new grandson, Matthew. The other thing I did, because I didn't want the weight of the dress to to be on the lace. Underneath it is a panel of silk organza, slightly more narrow than the lace, and so the lace never does drag on itself. The silk organza panel underneath mm -hmm. the lace, and then of course- Because the, it's vintage, and it's probably 100 years old. And it's amazing to me that we really can get this lace clean a lot of the time. I know. Because this is absolutely sparkling I white. Know. Oh, Shirley, thank you so much. And oh. now Shirley has some sew booking to share with you.
Shirley, that is the most beautiful scrapbook page. Oh, tell us about it. Well, I'd love to. Well, this is for this. I took my little granddaughter to see Sleeping Beauty. I try to take her to the ballet whenever there's something suitable for a little one. And they had a wonderful afternoon for children where they encouraged the little girls to come as princesses. And all little girls love to come as princesses. So I wanted something that kind of had that feel of feminine princessy sort of feel. So I stitched and placed everything first on a piece of pink organdy and if you will look at the finished page I embroidered uh, the title because she went to the ballet with her grandmama and um, so I stitched that first and uh, at the very end I added this wonderful trim looks just like a little girl don't you think oh I and do the pictures <laughs> so uh, that was the way I got started and of course when I first planned this out I laid the organdy on the backing paper the scrapbook paper that I wanted to use and also got my design so I could space everything out. And I printed these pictures out on my computer so I could play around with them. Uh, they're on nice uh, photo paper, but that's a great way to experiment without using your good prints if you have those. So uh, when I got it laid out and I knew exactly where the title, if you would, would need to be, I put a piece of organdy in my all fabric hoop. I do not have to use stabilizer using that particular hoop so I had no problems with little bits of stabilizer showing through there. So I got that done and got the embroidery ready and I had a big piece of, of organdy of course. And the next step was to sew those pictures on in the arrangements that I wanted and I glued them down with an uh, archival quality glue I just to get them there temporarily. Found a very dainty little stitch on my sewing machine and I put stabilizer, tear away stabilizer so that I could um, easily handle that fancy stitch. Sewed all of those pictures on very lightly. I didn't want it to be a real dominant kind of frame look mm -hmm. for them. I just wanted them down, make it look like a little girl, probably. And then when I got all of that done, I came back and I put the trim foot, this wonderful trim foot on my sewing machine and uh, laid the trim in there and I simply stitched it around and of course the trim will just kind of hang in there for us and you can just stitch it around and that was it very fast fun that's a wonderful foot to have the trim to go in it holds it up out of the way and you can see oh it my. does and it holds yeah. several sizes there so it's really oh, wow. handy you okay. don't have to do so much finagling with and that your was your stuff. last little thing just to put the pink and green flowers around the it. last thing was that's the trim a wonderful yes thing to take a granddaughter to the ballet it's marvelous isn't oh. it I feel so fortunate thank you. yes thank you so much shirley thank you and next i have a beautiful doll dress idea or two for you. I think a lot of you know how much I love dolls and this is a fascinating doll dress with a wonderful hem technique that would be great for a little girl's dress also. The beautiful little dress is made out of a wonderful cotton and you can see a little Peter Pan collar and this wonderful little contrasting trim. Now there's kind of a little secret to this doll dress. This is one piece, let me just show you. This much is one piece of fabric. Then this little contrasting band with the trim is one piece as well, one piece of fabric. And then the hem, which is lined, is one, is one piece of fabric. In other words, there's this section, this section, and the hem section. And this is what is so fascinating and such an interesting uh, hem treatment, not just for a doll dress, but for a child's dress also. And it's really interesting for those of you that love interesting techniques. Now this is the middle, the band with the trim on it. I start with a piece of fabric that's twice as wide as I'm going to need. Then I take my trim after dotting off the, uh, the narrow uh, seam allowance there. I take my trim, put it on the seam allowance, and zigzag it on. Now let me open this up to show you how, how that happened. You zigzag this on. Now that the piece is zigzagged, I'm ready to fold it. And now I have my finished uh, contrasting band trim. All right, the next step is to take the top part of the skirt. Now this is the top part of the skirt, and here's my band I just made. I'm going to put this right sides of the band to right sides of the top part of the skirt. And the seam allowance I'm using, I will straight stitch it all the way across. And you can see I now have the top part of the skirt, but we still have that interesting hem treatment to go. So let me show you what happens there. For the hem treatment, 
I have a white lining for the hem and the blue skirt of the hem. Right sides together. I stitch them together. And now I bet you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this right side out. Finger press and then really press at the iron. And see, I now have my double hem piece. Hang on a minute, let me open it for you. The blue side and the ecru side, this is the inside, this is the skirt side. My third piece is ready. And I put my, first of all, I put right side, the right side of the skirt. See, here's the top of the skirt, here's the bottom of the skirt, and here's the contrasting band. Okay, top of the skirt, that we've already stitched the contrasting band down to. Then right side of the dress, this lined piece, right sides together. I'm going to zigzag this hem piece onto the other two pieces and I fold it down and press and I have one of the most interesting hem treatments that has three little pieces. It has the fabric, the trim, the contrasting band, and this beautiful lined hem. And I'd like to go back over to the doll dress to look at this one more time at how pretty this really is all put together. You can see my little doll. Who, this, by the way, this trim has been used here also on the yoke. Let's come down once again the top of the skirt the contrasting band and the little trim that's so sweet in there, and then the lined hem, which is a wonderful, wonderful, very tailored technique. And now I'd like to share some hand embroidery with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend, Wendy Shane. Wendy is a designer of petite crochet patterns. She is a regular contributor to So Beautiful magazine, and she teaches at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion in Huntsville. Wendy, welcome to the show. Martha, thanks for having me. I brought with me this adorable christening gown, which features these little round flowers. If you look closely, you'll see they're comprised of rows and rows of bullion stitches. These are called pinwheel bullions and I'm here to show you how to make them today. So let's go ahead and get started. If you look at the fabric here that I brought, I've drawn a circle with a dot in the middle. So this is actually a little bit larger scale than I'm used to working, but um, I've made some adjustments so you could see clearly exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to start by stitching a split stitch around the outer edge. Now a split stitch is a stitch that is a back stitch in the fabric and then when you go down you split the thread of the previous stitch. Come up and back, come up and back. Now I'm using a split stitch because split stitch is the sturdiest foundation stitch um, around available or known. I like to use this stitch whenever I need a very, very um, tight edge that will hold its shape. So let me show you the next step. This stitch will actually go all the way around and end. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention is when you, when you get finished with this split stitch, before you take your fabric out of the hoop, you're going to pierce the center right at the dot with a stiletto or an awl and just make a nice little opening. And that's important because you don't want your bullion stitches to get too crowded. So now let's look at the next hoop. Okay. So I like to work the next step without a hoop. The reason being that um, in order to get the stitches to curve around or puff up, you need to be holding the fabric. Working in a hoop will flatten out your stitches. So I prefer the way this looks. No, I forgot to put my circle. Let's get that dot right in there. Okay. Now, when you're making this type of bullion, you want to start by emerging on the outer edge of the circle on the outside of the foundation. The foundation is going to be covered up, in, in other words. You're going to enter the circle and then exit with the tip of the needle out the same place where you went in before. So now I want to just anchor the needle, but don't pull it through. So 
you probably know, recognize this stitch from before. This is a traditional bullion stitch. I'm gonna wrap, the first wrap is the most critical wrap of all. I wanna make sure that it goes all the way down to the base of the fabric, and then I'm gonna wrap clockwise. When you wrap, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm putting 11 wraps on this one because uh, I wanted to make sure that the wraps on the needle equal the distance between points A and B. That means from the edge to the inside of the circle. And I know 11 is the correct number because I made it before this size, but you need to check every time you make one just to make sure that you get the correct number of wraps. So I like to wrap clockwise because I want my wraps to be smooth and shiny. The opposite way will result in a round ropey appearance to my bullion, which is okay, but it's not what I like. So I chose to go right. Now I'm gonna pinch the wraps on the needle with my forefinger and thumb, and then I'm just gonna pull straight up and tighten the stitch. So that's a traditional bullion stitch. And you can see this one looks a little cone shaped because of the way I'm tightening it after, without holding it, it tends to pull it into a point. And that's exactly what I want. Now I'm gonna go back down in the center, but this time I want to emerge just slightly to the side of the first one. You wanna make sure you leave enough room to put the next bullion in. So now I'm gonna make my next wrap all the way down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Notice I'm bringing my wraps all the way down. This is a, just a good pointer. The closer you get to the fabric, the better chance you'll have of not messing up your wraps. Um, so really, the back, the, the bullion stitch is a glorified back stitch. What I mean by that is it's just take a back stitch taken into the fabric. If I pulled this through, that would be a back stitch, but instead I'm just gonna wrap the needle before pulling it out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so I'm obviously not gonna be able to finish the flower, especially since I've got a knot, but let's see if I can get it out and then we can move on. Okay, well, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that out in time, but I do have a completed pinwheel bullion to show you, um, just so happens. So here's what the flower will look like when it's done. I wanna point out a few things to you. The center opening can be reopened as, as you need it to be. And you want to make sure that you don't crowd your bullions inside too tightly that they'll go one on top of the other. If you just keep them like this, you won't have any problems whatsoever. Wendy, thank you so much. And now I want to share a piece from my vintage collection with you. This dress was a gift to me. A lady had sent it in to me from Ohio and she made the phone call first and said, Martha, I have several pieces that are, belong to my family. No one in my family will appreciate them. Would you take them and use them somewhere? to share with other people. And I said, oh yes, well, when the box came, I was just floored. This gorgeous dress, look here, it has the netting is in the yoke and these wonderful little gray buttons, which actually might have had a covering earlier. I think they might've even had, but it was metal button. I think it had threads over it, which the threads are all gone. Look at the beautiful embroidery on the, on the bodice. And then the sleeves are just this gorgeous overall lace with a little netting. I think it's very interesting that she used a netting trim several places, double netting, ruffles, and a bottom of the sleeve, sort of, a, it's not really a cuff, just the bottom of the sleeve, and netting, and you can see there is hem stitching. Now coming on down this dress, this beautiful dress, you'll see that there is, over the waistline, there is a piece of French insertion. Let me lift this up so you can see it a little bit better. We have released pin tucks that come down the front, gathering a little bit of fullness, the beautiful heavy lace, and then starting around before we come along with the fancy band or the bottom of the dress, beautiful stalks of flowers, just absolutely perfect, white on white, of course. Let me move the dress up a little bit more because there's a real interesting sewing detail. Here's the bottom of the dress with some uh, in embroidery done on organdy, and I want to lift this up to show you that this dress had been uh, altered and it had been made a little bit shorter because we have what we call in children's 
close a growth tuck there. So someone that was a little bit shorter when, who inherited this dress, they had to take it up a little bit. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. Won't you come back next time? <laughs>